they sold for $123.99 plus shipping. Huge sale. Welcome to Over the Years. My name is Tim and I love vintage items. I hunt for treasures and bring you the ultimate prizes of antiques, collectibles, and vintage decor. Join me, my dukes, my girlfriend Josie, and other guests as we search for history. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Tim, from over the years. It has been a long time since I've had an opportunity to drop a pre-recorded video, but I promise you, I'm going to be back on track. So thank you to everybody who has stuck with us through this little bit of a hiatus. Thank you to everybody that has shown up to all of our live streams. If this is your first time tuning in to the channel, my name is Tim. This is Over the Years. I am a full-time reseller on six platforms, technically seven. So that's eBay, Etsy, Macari, Poshmark, Depop, Grailed, and Facebook Marketplace. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start trying to get you guys caught up on everything that has sold for us over the past like two months. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do span of two weeks in each video until we get caught up till today so hopefully over the next couple of weeks you'll get you know two to three of these videos to kind of get you guys an idea of everything that is selling for us most of the things that we sell are not necessarily seasonal things so these are items that you can still pick up even though i sold it maybe a month ago you can still pick it up and sell it today. If there is an item that I think the market has changed on from when it, I sold it till now, I'll definitely make sure to mention that because the objective of this video is to be able to give you, the viewer, as much information as possible to help you resell items online for a profit. So let's go ahead and cut the chit chat and jump right into it. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with eBay. Uh, the first thing that sold on eBay, okay, so first of all, let me just stop myself. <laughs> this is gonna be items that sold in a span from July 27th to August 10th. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna start with eBay. The first thing that sold on eBay during this time span are these uh these are like sailing like deck shoes. They're by a company called Musto. I've sold a couple of things from this company before, um a couple of jackets. These shoes were actually really nice in an amazing condition. I paid up for them a little bit from a little bit more of a higher end thrift store in my area. I think I paid like seventeen dollars for them. And I thought I was going to be able to get a lot of money for them, but uh, it just, it was a tough sell. It had been like six months. They were just sitting in the store. I had them listed on multiple platforms also. Uh, eventually, I just caved in and took an offer of $65. Um, so, yes, those boots are Musto Dynamic Pro 2 Size 10 Men's Boat Racing Sailing Deck Shoes. Um, and those... That company does sell very well, just in case anybody was wondering. Um, so I definitely would recommend selling those, those that that brand of of items. They make like jackets, um, clothes, and as you can see, deck shoes. I guess that's what you call them. So super interesting stuff. The next thing that sold was this vintage cassette tape voice recorder from Radio Shack. I typically pick up anything that's like old with tapes, um, electronic wise. Uh, this one was not, I, I usually just pick them up without comping them if I'm at like a yard sale or something like that. If I'm at the thrift store, I have a little bit more time to comp. Uh, so this actually only sold for $7.99, but I was only a dollar into it. So it's not that bad. Any profit is good profit. And this one was really cool. This is a vintage lunchbox tin that Josie and I picked up when we were yard selling in Pennsylvania. Uh, this was from the Life and Times of Grizzly Adams and Aladdin uh, tin lunchbox. Now, if this lunchbox would have been in like amazing condition, it would have been like, 
you know, anywhere from $70 to $100, especially if it would have had the thermos with it. But this one did have some roughness to it, although it was in, in fairly good condition considering its age. Uh, and it sold for $24 plus shipping. Next up was a piece of glass. This is a uh, pink depression glass. It's the pattern Mayfair Open Rose made by Anchor Hawking. Uh, I actually got this for free. A uh, woman who does estate sales had called me up and said she had a bunch of glass that she was going to get rid of. And she knows that I come to get glass at the estate sales. So she gave me a ring and I picked up a bunch of stuff. So shout out to her. Thank you for that. Uh, this one had some rough spots on the rim, uh, like flea bites, not necessarily like huge chips, but some damage. And it sold for $29.99 plus shipping. This one was a, an awesome find and sale. So I actually got this at a yard sale. It was sitting in a free box. Uh, it is a vintage National Airlines coffee mug. Uh, and on the back of it, it said, I'm Bill Fly Me. And anything Airlines Vintage does really well. Uh, so anytime I see anything that's Airlines, I usually pick it up. This coffee mug sold for $41.99 plus shipping. So a definite like something to be on the lookout for, especially the older airlines that don't exist anymore. Um, you can find all types of different things. It's really interesting stuff. This was a really dope uh, ashtray. It was um, black depression glass, sometimes referred to as amethyst glass, but this one didn't really have that much of an amethyst to it. Uh, this was made by Hazel Atlas, and it was in a, a checkerboard pattern is the pattern that people use, the name that people use to refer to this pattern by. Uh, it was really cool because it had the little slot in the middle where you can put your matchbook. And this sold for $25 plus shipping. I got this for $1. Next up was this really rad hat. This hat sold in like 10, 15 minutes and it went overseas. I think it went to France. Uh, this was a vintage 90s uh, trucker hat. And you can see um, it was called Tucker Snowcat. Anything with like tractor trailers, plows, um big trucks like that on the front of a hat seem to do really well shout out to my man sernok the hat god if you guys aren't following him on youtube or instagram it is sernok's connection so give him a follow and uh i was in on this hat for like two bucks and it sold for 24.99 plus shipping next up was a remote control I used to pick up all remote controls now i'm a little bit more uh, particular with them just to you know, because sometimes the profit margin is not as great. And you just make sure you always open them up and check and see if there's any battery corrosion and stuff like that. Sometimes it's good if you have batteries with you when you're out thrifting and stuff like that and you want to test it to make sure it works. But um, this one I bought for $1.99 and sold for $11.99 plus shipping. These are my first pair of Brooks shoes that I have sold. I picked these up at a yard sale. They were basically brand new and I got them for $5. Um, they sold and within a couple of days, they were Brooks Beast 16 DNA running shoes in a silver, blue and black colorway, size 11 and a half wide to E. And they sold for $50 plus shipping. So 10 times my money basically. This is a soccer jersey. Uh, this is your first time watching. I'm big on soccer jerseys. In the area that I live in, there's tons of soccer jerseys. So I'm always picking them up. Don't be afraid to take advantage of things that you find in your area. They might not sell well for everybody else, but you might have an abundance of them. So it might be worth your while to pick those items up and sell them. Um, I typically find them anywhere from like $1 to $5. Uh, this was a really cool one. This was a Zanzibar. It was Adidas uh, jersey, climate cool size small. And it sold for $19.99 plus shipping. Uh, up next is another soccer jersey. This one was a little bit, uh, I guess it was more rare than, than most. I had, it was a really cool jersey, well made. And it was a Russian Rolan Zero red soccer jersey, size large. And it sold for $39.99 plus shipping. Next up is a piece of Flow Blue. This is a really nice um, oversized sugar bowl. It's made by Grinley. And it was in pretty amazing condition considering its age. Probably close to 100 years old. 
uh, if, if definitely at least 100 years old, and it sold for $74.99 plus shipping. Next up was a lot of GameCube games. Uh, I got these at a thrift store for a dollar piece. They weren't in the best of condition and they weren't like crazy titles. So I took an offer and it sold all three of them for $25 plus shipping. This was a huge sale right here. So these are vintage Cambridge glass number 550. So Older glass doesn't necessarily have pattern names. They, they've been, their pattern names are numbers. Um, and these were really awesome. I paid like $2.29 a piece for these. It was three glasses, uranium glass, and they had the like gold trim on the top and then gold trim on the base. Uh, they sold for $123.99 plus shipping. Huge sale. Next up, McCoy. So McCoy has kind of lost some value over the years. Excuse me, but this uh, there is still a nice demand amongst those who collect McCoy. And if you can get it at a good price, it's definitely some money involved in it. Then this sold fairly fast also. This was a mid-century modern McCoy Floraline 520 Olive Green Planter. I think I paid a dollar for this. Um, and it sold for $31.99 plus shipping. The next up was this uh, really awesome vintage 80s budweiser trucker hat snapback uh got a couple bucks into this it had a little bit of wear to it uh the buyer bought this 19.99 plus shipping next up i picked up this uh canon camera at a yard sale in pennsylvania when josie and i went yard selling up there uh, i think i paid either seven somewhere between seven and ten dollars for it um i didn't comp it at the yard sale i just picked it up because it had the box the charger the cord everything so that sold for $30 plus shipping and it sold fairly fast also. I have been trying to add a little bit more Pyrex to eBay. Um, as a seller, the Pyrex prices are not as good on eBay as they are on Etsy. But some of the higher end pieces I will list on eBay. I also list them on Macari as well, as you'll see later in the video. The name of this pattern, it was Friendship. Um, it was the orange bowl of the set. Um, Cinderella Mixing Bowl 442. And it sold for $20 plus shipping. Next up is another hat. This is Henkel Electric uh, 90s Snapback made by Neeson. If you have a Neeson hat, always include that in the title. They do really well. Um, and then I also try to research what's on the hat to try and give me any sort of keywords that may prove useful in selling the item. In this case, this company was from Pennsylvania. So I put Pennsylvania in the title and it sold for $10 and 50 cents plus shipping. Next up is another sports card. So for those of you that don't know, I have been working on doing an over the years sports expansion where we will be selling sports cards, memorabilia, and apparel. Um, so this is the second card that I sold. I have been selling some cards without the like launch, um, just to kind of, you know, get things going and to have not have all my capital tied up. I actually pulled this out of a pack live on Instagram. Some of you guys were probably there. I know um, Jimmy from Uncle B's Old School Flips. If you guys aren't hip to him, make sure you check him out. He's got a cool channel. Great guy. And this was a Panini Mosaic, LeBron James, Jam Masters, Silver Prism, super short print, and it sold for $266.50. Next up are some golf clubs. Shout out to my boy Casey, the Carolina Hustler. Um, I picked up a bunch of golf clubs that somebody was throwing away on the side of the road. And in them was this set of irons, 1996 Callaway Big Bertha irons. It was a three iron all the way to pitching wedge. They had graphite shafts and they sold for $120 plus shipping and they sold within 24 hours. Next up is this gorgeous piece of Carnival Glass Antique Northwood Glass Strawberries is the name of the pattern. Carnival Glass, it was like a um, green color and... Ruffled Bowl, if you don't know, we are high on Carnival Glass right now. I think that the market is going to continue to boom with uh, Carnival Glass. We've been doing really well with it. And this bowl sold for $60 plus shipping. Next up is a set of three 
Hall China mixing bowls. They're like different sizes, small, medium, large. This went out to a viewer. I don't have the viewer's name, but shout out to the viewer. Appreciate your support. Um, they got all three of these Hall China mixing bowls that we picked up at a flea market on my way to Mr. Buys a Lot. Um, they sold for $54.97 plus shipping. These cufflinks. I have so many cufflinks and tie clips that I need to list. I just I bought a whole lot and I was in for them for a dollar a piece. I did list some. This set, this pair of cufflinks sold for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. Mid century modern. They're made by a company called Shields. Next up is the second set of golf clubs. These golf clubs also sold in less than twenty four hours. I found them for free. Callaway X24, a hot iron set, and they had steel shafts, four iron, all the way to pitching wedge, and they sold for $230 plus shipping. This is another crazy sale. I got this chamber pot at the glass shed for a dollar. And I mean, chamber pots are huge, and it was Flow Blue. Um, flow Blue, just you got to make sure you're hip to the Flow Blue because it's definitely like just, it's crazy. I paid a dollar for this. It sold for $150.39 plus shipping. It was a Grinley, same company as the Sugar Bowl, and the name of the pattern was May. Another vintage NASCAR t-shirt from the NASCAR t-shirt haul. I got like seven bucks into this shirt. It sold for $53. It was the all over print Dale Earnhardt with the barbed wire. And it was Chase Authentics, sold for $53 plus shipping. This is another one of those little books that I have. I think I only have one left, maybe. Um, actually, I might have sold that. I'm not sure. But this one, that was Gene Autry and the Bandits of Silvertip. It sold for $14.99 plus shipping. <clears throat> Vintage cassette uh, car stereo. Anything car stereos seem to do well. Uh, I picked this up at the auction for $0.89. Cents. It was made for an Acura, made by Pioneer. Uh, it had no connection wires, no nothing, no tested. So I just kind of put it up. It sold for $15 plus shipping. Another piece of carnival glass. Josie actually found this while thrifting with my roommate. This is an antique imperial glass zippered hearts. It was a uh, purple carnival glass. And it was like a little berry bowl or a sauce nice bowl. Dream. So and... definitely a good pickup. It sold $27.99 plus shipping. Next up is another gorgeous Flow Blue cup and saucer. This was Antique Stanley Pottery Terrine, uh, Flow Blue tea cup and saucer. It sold for $50 plus shipping. Next up is Furbies. Um, these things are almost all gone. I have no money into these. Um, Anytime I hear Furby, see Furby, sell Furby, I think of Emily Conway. Shout out Emily Conway. If you guys aren't hip, make sure you subscribe to her channel. Next up are these Salvatore Ferragamo Pebbled Leathered Oxford Dress Shoes, size 11D. And I got these at the pick at Mr. Buys a Lot, and they sold for $147.99 plus shipping. Next up was this xbox game it was sealed factory sealed brand new i paid a dollar for it at the yard sale uh, in pennsylvania with josie and it sold for 39.99 plus shipping next up this item has been in my ebay store for forever forever sandlot reference one of my favorite movies uh, 1982, 50 State Birds and Flowers, Mint Set, Stamp Book. There was no stamps in it. It sold $9.59 plus shipping. Next up was this ink cartridge. Um, for those of you that don't know, ink cartridges and ink toners do really well. I picked this up for a couple of bucks at the same yard sale I got those Brooks Brothers shoes at. And it sold for $23.99 plus shipping. So that is everything on ebay now we're going to jump into etsy <clears throat> all right so everything that sold on etsy between the days of i lost my little post-it note i think it was from the there it is from july 17th to august 10th so the first thing that sold this was there's a lot of stuff that sold during this time span of the stuff that i was, is old um, it's been in my store for a while, so that's always a good thing, in my opinion, because 
you know, it, if it's been sitting there, the fact that it sells is a good thing. Um, a lot of this stuff, probably, I'm surprised has lasted so long. Uh, but there's also a lot of stuff that is new that sold. This was a really cool piece. It was like this really small um, miniature cheese board, like butcher's block. Had the knife attached to it. Um, the buyer was all in for that for $36.03. So this person bought... What, how many teacups was it? One, two, three, four, five, five teacups. Um, they were all different types of teacups. Um, all of them were in my store for a long time. They ranged from like demi tasse to regular size, from England, from Germany, from France, um, and Japan. Uh, the buyer was all in for all five teacups for a total of $146.66. Next up was a vintage Pyrex bowl. Shenandoah was the pattern. It was a round mixing bowl, 402. Uh, the buyer was super happy, wonderful condition, well packaged for shipping, such a happy addition to our kitchen. Thank you. No, thank you. And... The buyer was all in for $21.21. Next up is Blendo Glass. This was the last of the Blendo Glass that I had. Blendo Glass usually does really well. Um, it's super mid-century modern. You can find it in all different types of colors. This was a couple of mismatch um, glasses and a pitcher. And the buyer was all in for $58.68. Next up, Hall China. You guys know we love Hall China. If you find Hall China, pick it up. I don't. I mean, some people may not agree with me, but I think it does really well, and it sells across all platforms. Uh, this was a Hall China maroon Aladdin teapot with infuser, and it sold. The buyer left a lovely feed pack, lovely teapot, as described, safely packaged and shipped timely. And the buyer was all in for $60.30. It was a gorgeous teapot. Uh, this was a really interesting, like, retro kitchen uh, cutting board or cheese board. It had oranges and lemons on it. And the buyer was all in for $31.06. This was a hat. Uh, this was a really dope hat. It was like a painter's hat, 90s Coors beer. Um, and the buyer left feedback, just like pictured. And they were all in for $29.87. Next up, this was a little saucer, uh, Fire King, Anchor Hawking, Jadeite. Jadeite, anything sells. Uh, don't be afraid to sell small items like this because every dollar counts. Uh, this sh was shipped very far, uh, all the way across the country. And the buyer was all in for $22.13. It was in the Alice pattern. This person bought two items. Uh, one was this Los Angeles Potteries. It was this huge, really cool shaped, cut, awesome colors, serving dish, pink and gray, and then a flower vase from Yukago. And the buyer was all in on those two items for $63.39. Another item that's been around for a long time. These were vintage Libby glass pastel colored tumblers. It was a set of four. And the buyer was all in for $37.29. Liberty Blue, remember I tell you guys every video, Liberty Blue is something to always be on the lookout for if you can find it at the right price. Um, this was a dinner plate and the buyer was all in for $20.74 on the Liberty Blue dinner plate. Um, we sold the other Pyrex Shenandoah bowl the same week. Uh, this was the round mixing bowl 403. I picked both of those bowls up at a yard sale for a dollar a piece. And this one, the buyer was all in for $33.76. This next item is absolutely stunning. This was a vintage Fenton glass cranberry opalescent coin dot. Six inch double crimped vase. This is a pattern you always want to be on the lookout for. Um, cranberry glass does exceptionally well, especially in the coin dot pattern. Uh, the buyer was all in on this item for $94.95. It was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is another interesting piece. I have a ton of this stuff. Royal Dalton Fine Bone China Bunnykins. Um, this was a salad plate. It was eight inch. Uh, it had the bath time, so it was like all the little rabbits playing in the bathtub. 
Uh, the buyer was all in for $30.31. Uh, next up, we have some more uranium glass. This is a really pretty vintage etched glass uh, uranium, cla bleh, bleh, uranium glass plate. It was 10 and a half inches wide, and the buyer was all in for $42.14. This is another item. I I had this for not too long, but I was unable to identify it, and I think I gave up too early. But the buyer was all in on this vintage ivory beige glass ruffled vase for $16.89. And we have some more uranium glass. This was a vintage McKee glass, uh, custard glass, Tom and Jerry, uh, part of a punch bowl set. So these were extra mugs. A set of four of them, and the buyer was all in on those four Tom and Jerry Vaseline glass custard glass mugs for $44.38. Next up were these little cute set of four plastic, uh, like flower, they were like in the shape of flowers on the top, uh, salt and pepper shakers, and they were really happy. They said, These are just the cutest, these go nicely with my red ones. Thanks, no, thank you. And the buyer was all in for $20.52 on those shakers. Next up, we have this really awesome Amberina glass, uh, manganese glass. So it does glow like an orange color uh, when it's under the black light. And the buyer was all in on that for $62.01. Next up is another awesome piece of um, Vaseline glass. This is a vintage Moser glass opalescent Vaseline spooner. Um, I got this in a huge find of stuff of Vaseline glass at a thrift store. It was a crazy pickup. And the buyer was all in on the spooner for $62.01. This is something that I used to pick up when I first started. And I basically just avoid this stuff now because it is so hard to sell. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. But um, I am I I don't buy this stuff anymore. But this was a vintage Williamsburg pottery lot. It was a pitcher, a candle holder, and a vase, and they sold for forty nine dollars and ninety cents. This was just a um, a vintage etched floral glass uh, bud vase. Uh, it was not uranium glass, and I got it for a dollar, and it sold for thirteen dollars and eighty three cents. The buyer was all in for. We have another piece of uranium glass. As you guys don't know, uranium glass is just, it's its popping. If you get yourself a black light um, and find you some uranium glass because the stuff is selling crazy. This is a vintage crackle glass, small uranium glass pitcher, uh, probably made by Kanawha Glass, uh, which is a West Virginia-based glass company. Um, and the buyer was all in on that for $34.21. This is a really cool piece. So this is... Um, the base of a Fenton um, lamp, it was uh, satin blue, and the pattern on the lamp was poppy. Uh, so on top where you see that ring, you would put a bigger um, satin blue, like like a globe top to it. Um, and the buyer was all in on that lamp base for $85.96. Up next, we have some more uranium glass. This sold fairly fast. This was a vintage Anchor Hawking block optic green uranium glass candy dish with lid. And the buyer was all in for $58.57. Um, I always like tins, vintage advertising tins. This was a this person bought two separate tins. One was a Chesterfield cigarettes tin, and the other one was a Lancaster salted nuts tin. And the buyer was all in for both tins for $39.10. And they left a five-star review. Just what I wanted. Thanks. No, thank you. Next up, more Pyrex. This was a vintage Pyrex golden casserole, oval casserole dish with lid 045. It actually had a little bit of wear to it. Um, or else I probably would have been able to get a little bit more money for it. But the buyer was all in after shipping for $43.96. Next up, this woman bought a lot. Um, I worked out a deal for her and I gave her a little bit of a discount. Um, and that is reflected in the price. It says shipping overages and other, but I just kind of like combined it in two separate discounts for her. Uh, she bought, I think it was, a, I can't even count. So this satin blue Fenton 
basket, this little Delf Blue windmill mini pitcher. This was a carnival glass uh, pinwheel pattern um, toothpick holder. This was a little creamer. Um, this was also another little trinket dish. This was a acro agate um, flower vase. This was a, who I want to say that was hull um, art pottery sugar bowl. This was another little art glass pitcher. This was a, this little trinket box that had earrings that's like connect to the top of the box. It was really cool. This was an Indiana glass vase. This was a Johnson Brothers pitcher. This one was dope. This was a super vintage um, pinoleum uh, atomizer, super rad piece. Um, and she was all in for all of those items for a grand total of $228.87. Next up, um, I know earlier we had talked about um, how airline stuff is definitely super popular. This was a vintage 1978 EAA, which stands for Experimental Aircraft Association. Um, Oshkosh, which I believe is a place in 1978, dated all on the mug. And this, the buyer was all in for $29.52. Up next, we have some more uranium glass. This is another, I got this with the same time I got that candy dish we talked about a couple minutes ago. This is Anchor Hawking. The name of the pattern is Colonial. Knife and Fork is its AKA. It was a milk pitcher and the buyer was all in on that item for $48.51. All right, and next up we have uh, some more of this nursery wear. I also have a ton of this stuff. If you ever find anything Beatrix Potter or anything Peter Rabbit, make sure you pick it up. Uh, it sells really well. So this was a vintage Beatrix Pottery or Beatrix Potter nursery wear, 1995 Peter Rabbit birthday plate by Wedgwood, and it sold for $36.10. Next up, we have this vintage 1984 Cabbage Patch Kids, excuse me, glass candy jar container. Cabbage Patch Kids, like, um, not to say the actual Cabbage Patch Kids, but like other stuff related to it seems to do really well. This item sold for $41.25. This next piece I thought was really cool. It was a vintage advertising thermometer picture. It was probably about this big. Um, and it was a dairy farm in Pennsylvania. Uh, anything vintage advertising is always going to do well, um, especially dairy farm stuff. And this sold for $32.17. Next up was another little green glass dish. Um, it, had, it was kind of like hobnail, but it was these diamonds. It was a six-pointed ruffled edge. Um, I paid a dollar for this, and it's, the buyer was all in for $20.59. Next up was a Jim Beam decanter. I used to buy a lot of these. Uh, the market has kind of slowed down on them, but I do. I don't think I, I might have a couple left, but um, yeah, if I find them and they're in good condition and they're unique, I'll still buy them, um, especially if the price is right. Uh, this one was a vintage Jim Beam decanter, Indianapolis sesquicentennial, Ugh. 1971. And uh, they were really happy with the item. They said, love this, fits in well with my other vintage Indianapolis decor. And they were all in for $25.43. Next up was another um, set of tie clips and cufflinks. This was actually Elks Lodge cufflinks and tie clips set mid-century modern. And the buyer was all in for $35.26. Next up was another piece of uranium glass. You can see we have sold a lot of uranium glass during this time period. Uh, this was a uranium glass divided condiment dish, nut dish, um, and the buyer was super happy. The dish was just what I wanted. It also, it came so well packaged that even though the shipper put a big puncture in the box, the glass was still whole and perfect. And the buyer was all in for $26.98. Next up, we have some more carnival glass. This is not necessarily, this is, I guess you could say this is technically modern, mid century, uh, modern carnival glass, so made in like the 70s. Uh, this was a Indiana glass. The name of the pattern was Heirloom Sunset. It was an eight and a half inch bowl. The buyer left five star feedback, 
and they were all in for $32.23. And you guys thought we were going to make it through what sold without some Jasperware? Yeah, right. Jasperware is still on fire. Uh, this was a vintage Wedgwood pale blue Jasperware. Um, Ulysses was the name of the motif. And it was a oval Ronson table lighter. And the buyer was all in for $25.96. And we have Morflow Blue. This person bought two saucers. This was a antique New Wharf was the um, name of the producer. The name of the pattern was Waldorf. Um, it was floral and bead embossed flow blue saucer. And for the two saucers and shipping and all that jazz, the buyer was all in for $50.86. This is another gorgeous piece of Fenton. Um, this is opalescent blue hobnail double crimped five inch vase. Um, the buyer was all in on this item for $41.90. Um, we sold another one of those same casserole Pyrex dishes. This one also had some damage. I was like, I have the worst luck finding this pattern. The name of the pattern is uh, Gold Acorn. This was an oval casserole dish, 045. This one did not have the lid. Uh, the buyer was all in for $16.82. And we have some more Fenton going out the door. This was a vintage Fenton hand-painted blue roses on blue satin. It was a large compote. Uh, the buyer was super happy. Five stars, absolutely beautiful. They could not be more pleased. And they were all in for $33.37. And more carnival glass, more Fenton glass. This was an antique Fenton glass, five inch. The name of the pattern was Panther. It had like panthers on it. It's so sick. Marigold color, uh, footed bowl. They said, I love this carnival dish. Great condition and arrived quickly. The buyer was all in for $26.02. And more uranium glass. This is a vintage hawking for Frigere Art Deco frosted uranium glass. It was a ice server ice bucket. Uh, really rad piece. And the buyer was all in for $51.38. And more Fenton glass out the door. This one sold super fast. I got, I had this on Etsy and Macari. I got so many lowball offers on uh, eBay. It was insane. So this sold for the buyer was all in twenty seven dollars and eighty one cents. This was a vintage Fenton glass misty blue bud vase, and they were super happy. Five star review. Beautifully packed, fast shipping, exactly as described and pictured. Thank you. No, thank you. And that is everything that sold on Etsy from July 27th to August 10th. Now we're going to jump into Grailed. All right. Time to talk Grailed. So I have been, I'm going to be honest with you, I've been really bad with Grailed. Depop, Poshmark, and Depop, Grailed, and Poshmark. Because I haven't been listening to any clothes lately. And I've got a whole pile of t-shirts here. i got a whole pile of stuff over there. And I just photographed 45 hats. So I am going to just try and kill it. Um, get back into the groove of things because... If you don't post, if you don't list things, you're not going to make sales. It's just how the facts, the facts are. So this is on me and, you know, I take it upon myself to make sure I'm more consistent with that. But with all that being said, I still made some sales. So let's go over them. First up, um, shout out Cernok. He always talks green hats right now are selling very well, particularly on Grailed. This was a vintage 1980s Murphy's Bar. Um, I think it was Rapid City. I can't remember where it was from. South Dakota, maybe? I think. I don't know. I feel bad. I can't read that. Uh, yeah, South Dakota. Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, and the buyer bought this hat uh, all in for $20. Next up on Grailed was this vintage 90s uh, Realtree camo snapback. It said Slavic across the front. It's a place um, in Pennsylvania. So I included that in the description. And the buyer was all in on that hat for $20. Next up was another hat. This was another really cool hat. It was a vintage 90s original jukebox 96 FM hat, trucker hat, snapback. 
and the buyer was all in on that hat for twenty dollars Next up, we had another, this one was a dope hat. I mean, they're all dope hats, so that's why I sell them. Um, and I, the profit margin is can be really good on these hats if you get them at the right price. I typically try to pay no more than $3 per hat, unless I know I, the return value is gonna be super high, then I might you know pay more from five to $10 a hat, uh, depending on the profit margin, obviously. Uh, this was a vintage 1980s Air Force Pats trucker hat snapback. And the buyer was all in for $23. Uh, the next item that sold on Grailed was another snapback hat. This was a vintage 90s Chevrolet All-Star trucker hat. It actually had an autograph on the bill, but I, I, I had no idea who it was. So, But I, I just put that in the listing. And this one sold for $25 shipped. Next, we have this vintage 90s HF McAllister grading. It all had like a tractor trailer thing on the patch um, and it was red. And that sold for $15. Next up was these vintage cufflinks. So we did it actually did well during this time period on cufflinks and tie clips. These, uh, I believe, were Swank, which is like one of those names you want to look for when you're buying these mid-century modern uh, men's dress accessories. These were like Sphinx on them. They were really like a, like a nice size cufflinks and tie clip matching set. Uh, and the buyer was all in on those for $28. So I, I definitely have a ton of these mid-century modern um, tie clips and cufflinks that I have to continue getting listed. Uh, so that's gonna probably be my next project after I get all these clothes listed. Uh, it's definitely, cause I'm only a dollar into them. So I can, you know, get away with selling them anywhere from 10 to $20. The other items somehow has got placed at the front of all these pictures. So now I'm just kind of like talking to you guys as I get through them and bam, I got to it. So this was a, a t-shirt that I got in a mystery box of vintage clothes from my boy here in DC. And this was a wrap T Bow Wow early 2000s Y2K front and back graphic. It still had the tag on it. Um, it was a size large, but it was definitely like a small. So it was super small, but it uh, sold for $40. So I'm not mad at that at all. And while I'm up here in the front, that's everything on Grailed. So now we're going to jump into Depop. What? So yeah, I actually made a sale on Depop. Um, I made a couple more that you'll see coming up. So this, that was pretty cool to like get back on the board on the Depop sales. This was a vintage... Um, this was a vintage uh, Dale Earnhardt from that same NASCAR lot. Uh, t-shirt with a big graphic on the front made in the USA uh, nutmeg t-shirt and the buyer bought that for $64.99 um, I also made another sale on Depop that was this vintage Pepsi trucker hat snapback hat uh, the buyer was all in on that hat for 16 well actually no not all in it was $16.99 plus shipping um, so those are the two items that sold on Depop. Now we will jump in to Macari. All right, Macari sales. So Macari is just, Macari is like me, it's bipolar. It'd just be like really hot one week and then really slow for two weeks. So it's just, it's just give and take. Um, and they're making changes to their platform too. So I'm kind of curious to see how that changes things uh, moving forward. But that being said, let's go ahead and show you guys what we sold on Macari. These numbers do include shipping. Uh, the first thing that sold was this Minolta Freedom Family Zoom 35mm point and shoot camera. Um, the buyer was all in on that camera for $30. Next up was a piece of Wedgwood Jasperware. Another one of those little round trays, pale blue. Um, I want to say this one had the State of Maryland emblem in the middle of it. And the buyer was all in for $15 on that piece. Next up was the Pyrex. Now, this dish, I got super stoked. I found this at the thrift store. I got very lucky. It sold so fast. This is a pattern that you want to be on the lookout for. The name of this pattern is called Butterprint. 
Um, this was the Butterprint 503, which is the largest refrigerator dish in the set. Um, the buyer was all in on that item for $56. Next up, we sold this vintage 1973 Pepsi Warner Brothers glass with Sylvester on the front. Uh, the buyer was all in on that glass for $15. So that is everything that sold on Macari. I want to say that the last platform that we're going to touch on is going to be Poshmark. And I'm not quite sure how many items sold on Poshmark. It might just be one item this week. But at some point during when you guys see these what sold videos of, of us trying to catch up on all the sales, you will see that Poshmark uh, started to pick back up again, which is always a good thing. I'm just, I really hope that when I drop like 100 listings of clothes on all these platforms that it really just like starts to generate that traffic up again. Because um, that's going to be super important, especially moving forward here in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, the only thing that sold on um, Poshmark was this pair of Ralph Lauren Sport Thompson 650 women's jeans, uh, size 27. The buyer left four stars out of five with no explanation why. I don't understand it. It always irks me because I just want to know so that I can, you know, make sure that whatever it is that they were bothered by, if by any chance it was on me, that I'm able to correct that mistake in the future. But anyways, those pair of jeans sold for $19. So ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up everything that has sold from July 27th to August 10th. Uh, before we wrap things up, I got a couple of shout outs I want to give. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Lisa and Rob over a couple of pickers. Uh, they just cracked 1,000 subscribers, and I'm super happy for them. They've been amazing uh, friends, not just like supporters of reselling, but amazing friends. Um, and, you know, they've they've done so much for so many people, and they always put on a good show when they go live. Um, so I'm super happy for them. I love you guys. Congratulations on 1K. And another person that hit 1K recently Chris, the old school picker, um, this guy, I mean, what can I say about him? He has been so supportive of so many channels along the way. I just, you know, it was important for me to see that guy get to 1K. It's super deserved. Um, he's put in a lot of work and, you know, he's got a lot of other things that he has on his plate. So we love you, Chris. Congratulations, brother, on hitting 1K. And the last person I want to congratulate on 1K is the homie Eric, the OBX picker. I mean, one of the nicest dudes, like we talk, you know, he hits me up on, on Instagram, FaceTime, and we'll chat and everything like that. I was the first guest on him and Dapper Tiger's Friday night show. And now that show is like amazing. And then he sent me a bunch of cool stuff. And like, he's a huge supporter and just a great guy. I'm super proud of him. So congratulations, Eric. We love you, brother. Congratulations on 1K. So that's going to wrap everything up. Uh, make sure you guys watch these videos around my face. Subscribe to my football podcast channel if you like football. Authentic in the beard. Um, there should be like a little circle up here that you can click on to get to that channel. Thank you guys. And we'll see you in a couple days with another What Sold video. Peace.